Welcome to episode 213 of Sawdust Nation Podcast. Today we have, oh, you have your shirt on, I like it. Uh, we have Victor from Wim Designs and myself, Josh from North Country Woodworking. And with that, Victor, man, how goes it over there in New Jersey? Well, New Jersey, oof, what has been going on? Um, so you know that I'm trying to do uh, shop cleanup. Um, I want to try to finish that CNC this year. That is the goal. So in uh, in those in that genre of cleaning up, I've been 3D printing and mounting tools. I have a couple of 3D prints here. Um, I, I actually sent a, a question into another uh, podcast this week, and I asked him about or last week about uh, Etsy orders and how many. You know, basically, like, how many items should I have before I start posting? And everybody resoundingly said that all I need is one. So I'm going to show you here real quick. This is my, this is my, I'm sure you've seen it before, but this is my drill hole. Mm -hmm. right? Mounted both ways. These are all 3D printed, have no issues. I've had them sitting up on the wall for at least six months. No problems. Um, I'm, right now, I'm thinking about doing the uh, files. If I see that people want to go ahead and and start messaging me and saying, hey, you know, how much to actually print it, I'll go down that road. I have a couple of the designs. One of them is a eyeglass holder, right? Oh, wall. nice. Got your safety glasses right here. So I can lose them much less than what I normally do, which we all know that that happens um based on the same on the drill holder and i'm sorry josh i know i'm just going on but i have a big vision no no right this is this is for the this is going to be for let's say the um uh what do i have up there i have the pin nailers which are a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. i have grinders and so forth um i think i'm actually going to try to try to uh do a uh hand plane a uh, one of the uh, battery hand planes. So that's. Oh, okay. um, I also have a festival domino. So I designed actually accessory holders for all the festival dominoes. One of them is it sounds it sounds simple, but here we go. It's actually a cup, right? To hold the dominoes, it's going to have the label on front. That's going to have whatever size you know, eight by fifty, whatever it might be. What's nice about it is. Take it, yeah. Take it off, take it off. You can also. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, cool. you can also three. You can three D print this and use that for your screws. You can have different, yeah. You know, and then if you have this space, you can go ahead and and put those all over your shop or at least wherever you wherever you want. So right now, that seems to be the most of my uh, most of my time designing. But I do have one of the projects. Hold on one second. Oh, let's see. Uh, wait a minute. Hopes if I take it out of the mics, guys. Okay, so I know this is a really good pipe. Your tool wall there looks pretty good too. I know you did that a while ago, but it looks nice. <sighs> So this, my friends, is going to end up being, it's hard to see, but it's going to be a walnut bench. It's a beautiful piece, my friend. Where'd you end up picking up that piece? Well, <laughs> yeah, go there. Okay. Um, so right now I'm, I'm actually thinking about going down the rabbit hole of making some legs. I have another another piece here instead of buying legs and doing metal. Um, okay. I, I really think that that's something that I want to, I want to do. I want to try the joinery, go down that road. I have a domino. Why not? Why not use it? Um, and that right now probably is my, my biggest, my biggest things going on. Um, I'm, I'm always designing. So that's, that doesn't change. Uh, the laser and stuff in here. Yeah. It's just, it's just really trying to find the space and time to get everything done. Every time I, I get one thing done, I have a tendency, which I know everybody does, to go ahead and start three other projects and never really finish that first one. Um, but 
you know, um, I've gone down the rabbit hole of 3D printing. I got a couple more 3D printers so I can start hopefully um, getting a little farm going. Yes, Joey, it's a bamboo farm, not a Prusa farm, just to let you know. <laughs> um, but no, that's 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 what I'm doing. Um, I've I've learned in the past year or so that th 3D printing it's it's great. Designing is really what I, I I like. I actually just did one for a buddy of mine, um, uh, a porter cable holder. The uh, the holder. Okay. So what happened? This porter cable, mm -hmm. for, for whatever reason, the one that he has, I think it's an older one, they don't have any holes for to mount on the wall. So I decided to make a holder that you could just slide the the battery uh, charger in there and then just mount that to the wall. Um, I am on version 11, and I think now it's finally done. Uh, so, Takes time when you're doing those kind of prints to get the right well, size. Yes, and especially when it's not a square. Right, you have curves, yeah. you have angles, um, so we're fingers crossed that's going to be done. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I think three D printing can definitely be used in a lot of people's shops. A lot of people don't want to do it, and I'll be honest with you, you don't have to design files. There's plenty of files out there. You don't have to go ahead and you know sit there and and try to learn fusion and and drive yourself you know, crazy, pull what little hair you have out left. And, you know, you can just go and try to find a file on Thingiverse and print it. So there's, there's all opportunities. And if you don't like to do that, you know, again, like you guys have said on every week, you know, just get in your shop, just get in your shop and do something, you know, you know, and it doesn't even have to be in your shop. I mean, you know, this year I've also been out, you know, in the yard getting stuff done, you know, so, yeah, that's what's going on by me. How's everything going by you guys? Everything good? Oh, not too bad. <clears throat> um, I got back, and I'm actually back in Illinois. And I haven't been in the shop, but I've been getting situated at work. I've been gone for quite a while at work. Even though I was gone on a work trip, um, there are still things that you miss when you're, you know, you're not physically in the shop. Um, so catching up on what's going on there. Um, it looks like I actually will be going um, on another trip coming up the first week of August ish. Yeah, first week of August, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I'll be leaving, going to Colorado uh, to a conference in Denver. I should be seeing uh, Ben Warren there, and uh, we'll be doing some safety stuff. Um, and then getting spun up on some of the things and um, in the real industry out there, not just the Air Force side and OSHA. So that's coming up um, with that. <laughs> um, I'll be jumping in the shop here, hopefully this weekend, knocking out. Uh, I got a couple plaques I need to get out. Um, <clears throat> a couple different uh, versions of plaques. So one's going to be a lot of laser work um, with a couple different layers. And then one's going to be more of acrylic style. And the third, not really a plaque. I call it a plaque because, I mean, like, it's like a operational plaque, if you will. It's a liquor box that's shaped as, like, an ammo box. I've done them before in the past, and it's a recreation of that. So, we're knocking those out. I have the clock project I'm still working on. It seems like a long time coming to get that completed. Clock project. Did I miss that one? Yeah. Um, so... Long story short, to spin everyone up that I might have missed it, um, I got a grandfather clock from a client that they broke when they were a toddler. And their parents said when they got married, they would receive that as one of their presents. Well, those parents uh, made true to the word and gifted that clock to them. But they didn't have any real place to put it in their house. So we went over some ideas and... We came up with two different projects with the materials. One was a um, uh, oriental box, basically from the bottom of the clock, where they could store some few things in there. And then the other portion would be make a, um, a not acrylic, epoxy uh, front and put a clock face on it 
and then use some of the wood too that was included with a grandfather clock to kind of you know create the back and stuff like that and during this process i've had to pick up some new tools and figure out some different things that's where the um the, not the power sander the um sandblaster came into play um with the trim for the box and stuff like that um i do have to do uh or build a quick acrylic box so that when i spray the media it stays within a certain area so i can continuously reuse it um that shouldn't take that long to do um especially because like i just need basically a box with two holes in there and then an operational door where i can put things in and out it's just basically could attain it because if you ever sprayed anything like that in the shop, it goes literally everywhere. Like I, I've, I've been finding little pieces of granular walnut everywhere. So um, I do have quite a bit of work to do in there. And then afterwards setting up the shop for more of a sales base, but I'm getting there. Well, if, if you need any help, I know, it's, I know you haven't been in there a while. If you need somebody to just catch you up on how to use that laser or you know, come over and walk. Uh, those are those are things you don't oh, forget. Yeah. Um, I mean, there there are different things yeah. I tell you that like might take you longer to set up. But um, I've been doing more of the file side where I can inside, and then once everything's set, it's going to just be a mass production, knock everything out. So, um, well, one plaque, like I said, was going to be layered, and it's going to be of a military working dog. I used the German Shepherd outline. And interior is going to have like a armed force member with a military work dog, you know, like actively going forward. Um, and then another one's going to be like, you know, military work dog, how they bite the suit when they kind of, that's going to be in there. It's going to be like a whole, like three different scenes within this one piece. Um, and I'm going to set that up for them. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot you could do with lasers, and there's a lot you could do with your CNC. Um, the limit really is if you can find the file or create the file yourself, as you were saying with uh, 3D printing. Um, I could probably find a file out there for this, but um, this is where I literally like doing the custom stuff. So I'm going to continue doing that. And like once I create this file, I can go ahead and post it on my Etsy or my webpage. And I could sell it for a few bucks because people, you know, will inevitably want to do that. And that's kind of, I'm starting to set myself up in such a way where I can make money passively and also sell my pieces in my shop. Um, because I do enjoy like yourself designing. Um, when it comes to CAD, I'm, I'm just, I haven't taken the time to learn the programs. Um, you have definitely taken up well, you can. that mantle no, and you're definitely looking at that. Don't, don't listen. What I've learned and what I know is very, very small compared to some of these people out there, but it, you know, we well, guess yeah, they're no, somewhere. Exactly. And, and I'll be honest with you for the people that, that don't want to do, um, fusion 360, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. It's intimidating, it intimidating but Absolutely. coming from somebody that went from Tinkercad to Fusion 360, my suggestion from my experience, learn Fusion 360, because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're going to get to a point where your limitations are met. And if, and if you're just doing small 3D things with, with not a lot of curves, now, I mean, I'm not saying you can't do great things with, with Tinkercad, but if you're going to take the time to learn it, you know, to me, I would rather take more time and learn Fusion 360 and have those extra, yeah. you know, things in my pocket to be able to to, to be able to do. Um, that's just my thought. Everybody, everybody learns differently. Everybody, you know, a lot of people feel very intimidated, so they might end up going with Tinkercad because it is an easier program. Um, I, I like it. I can't say anything bad about it. It was great to start with. I just really felt that it wasn't something that was going to last too long for me. I needed something with, you know, um, a little more options. So, Well, you definitely migrated fairly quickly over to Fusion 360. Did you use any kind of like YouTube or what kind of training uh, sources did you I use? I mean, I went any? online. I, uh, I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of the guy's name, Lars, I think it was. 
Um, he has, he has like three main videos and I just took my laptop. I grabbed another laptop or PC, whatever I was on. And I ran the video and I followed exactly what he did. And I did those three videos and then I would grab another. Now, granted, even when you do that, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to forget things from the first video. So don't, don't think that you just did those three videos and you're good to go. You will also end up doing something thinking that it should work and it doesn't so you have to go back mm -hmm. there is just an, a continual learning um i haven't i haven't gone down the rabbit of um the classes uh, the paid classes because the problem becomes is if you pay for a class and you find that person isn't giving you that information the way you know you want it or, or Let's let's be honest. I hate to say it this way, but they're boring, or or you're not, not you know, yeah. you're just you're gonna feel gypped. And I didn't want to go down that route. And there is plenty of fusion vid uh, videos out there. I mean, there's ones I look at it and I might, it makes my head spin. But again, you just have to take one video at a time and and do it. You know, and I can't tell you. How, I mean, I can't tell you how many times. Like right now. Um, they call them uh, components in 360. So mm -hmm. you're supposed to set up. So if you're doing like, um, let's say you're doing, you're doing this whole thing, right? So we're going to make this yeah. one component, this one component, the back one component, the sides one component. So what happens is when you're in Fusion, if you're working on this, this is all grayed out. Okay. But you can still see it. If you're working on the back, this is everything else is grayed out. So you're working on one piece. I just, <laughs> I just got to figure that out. And I still haven't mastered it because if you don't set that up and then switch back and forth the way you're supposed to, it's all into one big file. And now when you're trying to find this one hole right here, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it might be the last one all the way down or the first, you know, so. Again, this is stuff that, I mean, you have to understand that it's going to, unless you go for formal training for it, you take classes and you spend the time to do it, it's going to take time. Now, unfortunately, Absolutely. that does take away from stuff in the shop. But again, this is for the bigger picture. So like I said, I this is, this is the goal to get everything up off of surfaces, be able to walk into the shop, go in and build that CNC and go ahead and uh, start using it. So, well, that was your, I mean, that was your goal from the very beginning. So, you know, you're it's doing getting, this, it's getting, you're it's learning getting your program. It's than I want it to, but you know what, as long as I know I'm moving forward, that's all that matters to me, you know? And that's where, you, I mean, that goal is a year long goal. I mean, you're, you're getting there. I could see behind you, I mean, alone, uh, that looks great. And I know different other things you've gone and done in um, 3D printed that's helping out in the shop. Like it's apparent that you're actually going down and meeting your goal. Um, talking about goals, it's almost the end of the year. You starting to think about uh, next year or what you're going to be working on? I don't know if you can see the wall. Oh, yeah. There it goes. I don't mind all the best. But so we're. <laughs> that's a nice tool wall you got going on yeah there. i got a couple more i gotta fill up but again this is where all the this is where all these these jigs come in and like i said it's you know you you can make them if you enjoy making them and again that doesn't i mean it's a lot probably a lot of less expensive for wood that you have in there but for me it's easy because once i have the file i just print it out yeah you know i mean so what once you get your shop cleaned up and the CNC going, and we head into the next year here, you know, like four months or not four months, like six months. Um, what what's your plan for next year? Because these are some major goals that you're going to be knocking out here. Um, next year going to be a production well, year. I'll be honest with you, Josh. I really would like to do signs. I know a lot of people do signs. Um, I, I also want to just because I I started the 3d printing i'm also thinking about doing the same thing for um for the cnc um i, I knew there's a gentleman okay. on on um on instagram that uh probably everybody 
everybody's heard. Um, I believe it's um, Pete Squared. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, probably I'm saying his name wrong, but he does a lot of these files. Um, he does a lot of CNC stuff, jigs, 3D printing, and a lot of his stuff is, is like that. So my, my thought is to be able to start making things that I can sell. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be signs. I, I mean, I, I do like the sign industry because I feel like a lot of people like them. You know, you can make money. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people doing it. So you have to come up with, you have to come up with something that, you know, everybody else doesn't have. Uh, that's the challenge. Yeah. Right now, my challenge is to get the CNC made. Next step is to figure out what exactly I'm going to use it for. Um, cause I mean, essentially right now I could do the same thing with the X carve, but the X carve is limits me with the spindle that I have on it and the size. So mm-hmm. I want to be able to have something that it's, it's at least four feet wide, two feet deep and be able to make signs and, you know, and at that point I can do tiling and, and, you know, the size of it shouldn't, shouldn't matter, you know, going, going <laughs> forward. It's amazing how quickly that the size of the CNC uh, becomes an issue once you start doing more and more with it. I know in the beginning when I bought my initial X-Carve, um, I never thought I would have to upgrade at any point in time or need to because, you know, tiling and all that. But it definitely it has become difficult at times to produce some of the things I want to because of the size of it. Now, in the new so, shop, would you consider, like, if if – money time everything wasn't a, a factor and i mean obviously money is a factor because right now you where you're at and you're at the you're in your shop right that's there's always yeah are you would you consider upgrading to a bigger cnc since you have the laser that you have or um eventually i would like to have a larger cnc especially a uh, bed okay. um that would definitely help out. Um, but I mean, for where I'm about to, for where the shop is about to go, I, I'm going to be making projects that are able to be produced on the equipment I have. And that's, that's the big thing is like, um, as I got more and more jobs, I was getting bigger, bigger projects. And with how I am turning the shop into more of a, um, a, a storefront more than anything, um, I'll be able to control the size of the basic of the projects. So, I mean, am I losing a little bit of, the, of what I like to do by not doing all custom pieces? Absolutely. But what I gain back in time using the equipment I already have and be able to, to batch things out, I believe I'll, I'll gain that back, my time back, and actually we'll be able to produce more of a revenue that is sustainable and I can – kind of utilize to grow the business in the direction I want it to. So well, that that being said, from a from a production standpoint, do you have like a obviously you're gonna have X amount of items, right? But do you have yeah do you know how many you're gonna have on hand? So that's gonna obviously change back mm-hmm. and forth. And then um I will probably do the bigger stuff. I'll probably do four or five. And then of the smaller stuff, I'll do much more. But in the beginning, I'm probably only going to do one or two of each and see how they sell. Um, if things that I'm not sure about selling, I'll do one or two. Things I know will sell, I'll do a little bit more. And then we'll go from there. And I'll, I'll change exactly what I need as the sales come in. Um, and I'll do it inventory month by month you know what i'm saying the beginning of the month i try to knock a bunch of stuff out when i can get it good for the month and once i start seeing a, a trend i'll be able to determine exactly what i need to have pre-made excuse me pre-made and then in storage waiting for the orders to come in so now you've you've done you've done custom work a lot and now you're thinking about going, or you're 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 venturing into a storefront, right? Pre-made items. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming that you 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 could also plan to do a custom piece. Are you just completely all custom pieces Cus- or no? 
No. Uh, custom pieces would be done a lot with the plaques. Maybe a shadow box here or there. But... Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so custom pieces uh, will still be a thing. Um, the plaques will still be, majority of them will be custom in some way or form. Um, it, mostly the storefront items will be the same things over and over. Well, if you know, a little bit of differences. Uh, and then we'll see how that goes. Because plaques for me, I really enjoyed them. I can knock them out fairly fast depending on the plaque. And they're easy to ship. And the, what I'm trying to get at with my uh, with my my stock essentially is to have like three different boxes, and those three different boxes fit all my stuff, no matter what the size, so that I can really focus on like shipping's always been a struggle. It seems like it's been a struggle with both every host that's been on here at some point in time, and if I can really get that to be everyday occurrence where I, I can take one of my projects. I already have a box for it. I already have the shipping stuff and get a label and get it out. And within a day, just stop putting fragile on it and you'll be fine. <laughs> it seems to be the case, right? So I, I've learned a lot. And during that time I've learned, you know, kind of where I want to be with the shop. I want to continue woodworking, but I need to make it sustainable, especially with, um, you know, a lot of different changes happening right now. And then on top of like the workload I have, things are not the same as when I started and I have to adjust accordingly. Uh, and to do that, this is kind of the direction I'm going with it. Um, I, I might hate it. I might go right back to where it was and just do less or it might work out really well. It's an experiment. I call this the throwaway year. Next year is the experimental year. <laughs> so, and we'll go forward. I mean, that's what you do with business. If something's not working, you have to adjust. You can't keep going because either you're going to shut down your business or you're going to go bankrupt or you're going to lose your business. So I am making that shift to see what I could do as a business owner to, you know, for more profit, more time back, and it just overall enjoy the process a little bit more. I don't, if I make a product and it doesn't sell, then I'll go to a local um, fair or something. You know, I'll mark down the price and get them sold. Um, out the pocket, I'll be out of the pocket in the beginning with different resources. But um, I already have a business strategy, which I didn't have when I first started, and how to manage the money moving forward and how to manage things in such a way where. I might not pull anything back into my main accounts. I might not have spending money for whatever reason, but the business will always have money to uh, pay the bills, to um, go ahead, buy equipment and everything else. And then like anything, you have to start small, let that those nest eggs grow. And then when it gets to a certain point, then you can start talking exactly. about paying yourself. Yep. I mean, a lot of people out there have done business and the hardest thing to do is pay yourself. And eventually I'll get there, but like, because I'm restructuring the way I am, this would be much more calculated, much more organized, which should allow me for, you know, a better business profile going forward. Cause I got a idea. I mean, like I, you know, I was doing really well for a while, and then I moved, and then I bounced back, and then I was doing okay, got busy, slowed down, and like that. Sometimes that money will go toward, you know, something else, and then you know I would need some more equipment or I need some more sandpaper, and it's just all relying on the projects coming in. Yeah, and that gets expensive, and it gets it does it gets expensive. And I wanted the business to run itself and not have to worry about any other income adding to it. So, well, the reason, like I said, I've I learned a lot in the last year, a couple of years or so when it comes to business. And I still am learning a lot, but I know that I have been doing it incorrectly. So I'm giving myself that reset button. Wow. The fact that you can actually say that you're doing it incorrectly, I give you credit because there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't even say that. Oh, no, I'm, you know, I'm just changing. I, you know, 
I'm, I'm doing it fine, but it's not working, so I'm going to do something else. Not that you're actually saying, okay, you know what? This isn't working. I need to change it. And, and that's, you know, I give you credit. Well, the reason that I add, hey, you know, worst critic. You should be your worst critic. You should be, but critic. not everybody is. So the reason I asked about the, the items that you're going to be selling is because I want to make sure that those mallets are not on there. Because those mallets <laughs> are so hazardous. I'm telling, I, I need to tell this story, okay? Uh, and I, I will not take any responsibility on this. But uh, there, was, there was this guy that, that got a mallet from Josh. Okay, beautiful mallet. Excellent mallet. Um, I, it's something that, you know, Thor would probably be happy to, to have in his, in, in his arsenal there. And I was, uh, I was making a project and I, and I was making a little epoxy sign, nothing big, nothing crazy. And I went and I took the mallet and I tapped it one side, popped right off. No problem. Something happened. I screwed it up. I had it. I had to do it again. Well, um, the person doing it, and I won't say who, but the person doing it picked up the mallet and whacked it, and it didn't pop off like it normally did. Well, the person that did it this time decided to put glue, hot glue, okay, to seal everything instead of the caulk that he put on before, and he went and hit it again, and it didn't come off, okay? Hit it couple more times gave it a little more you know because that's what you do when you're when you're trying to get something you just get a bigger hammer and hit it right well you're passing right yeah. well i will not tell you about that same person that went and cracked that thing right in half and then said to josh i don't know i don't know your hammer just broke my <laughs> broke my project i don't know what you're talking about now the thing is awesome i love it um i think you do excellent work i mean i I got that, and it was unbelievable. Um, I, I hope you do still do those because I don't know if those are one of those things that you can do that won't take up a lot of time. But um, and I know, yeah, I probably will. I, I definitely set up for you know. it. So there's going to be there's going to be a few different things on there that people will recognize, and there'll be a couple of different things I haven't done before, but have the design and have the files to just haven't put out there yet because no one's asked for it. So I'm hoping based on what I've seen other places and I'm going to produce those files. And like I said, I'll have a couple and we'll see how it goes. Now, when you, I, I've heard you talk about the files before and I've heard you actually say that you, you buy files from different. Sometimes. Do yes. you find that, yep. do you find that it's worth the money that you're paying for it? Do you have anybody in particular that so, you like would recommend? Well, when I say buy files, the majority of the files I do buy are vector files because I do run into different organizations that have, I'll, I'll be like, hey, I need a, um, I, I, I'll I need a patch that's vectorized from you, um, that the one you want me to do, I need SVGs, PNGs, and what they'll do is they'll take a JPEG and they'll convert the file to SVG or PNG. Which, if you do that, you don't get the qualities of what a vector file mm -hmm. is. Um, but um, with that, I do and have used a multitude of different people when it comes to um, buying those kind of vector files, too, where I provide them with an image, and they're able to go ahead and essentially provide me with a PNG some of them will provide with a JPEG, a PNG, SVG, a broken apart in color. It depends on what you ask for. And I've used, you know, Etsy is a resource for that, depending on what it is. You can definitely find stuff like that um, on there. But uh, I try to do things myself before I go ahead and outsource that kind of file because I, ha I did have taken time to learn it quite a bit myself and but that don't always so pan out let's just be honest sometimes you need help and that's okay so uh, i'm actually looking up someone that i have used in the past and it's kind of i know he got a new website design which i haven't seen so i'm trying to make sure that's the same guy um because i don't want to um get his name wrong 
but like I said, I've used Etsy. I've done it myself. Um, there's been times where um, file share. There's been times where, you know, you ask for help uh, from other makers and they have the file, um, especially military makers, um, because, well, let's just be honest, we probably are going to do the same thing or something close to the same thing when it comes to some of these um, organizations. And, you know, we all share all fair love and war, right? So we're trying to help each other out. Um, but again, I usually go through, I believe his name is uh, Victor 911. Or, and I'm looking it up to make sure I don't slaughter that because it's been a while. Because again, I, I will try to do my best to do it myself before I reach out. But sometimes um, time gets the best of me and I can't do it myself. So let's the reason see. I bring it up is because once I do get uh, the CNC up and running, I haven't sat down and done any vectors or, or V car for a very long time. So it's something that I need to, you know, uh, you know, yeah. refresh myself. And it's, it's, I, I don't mind doing that, but if I have a file that I could throw on there and, you know, work off of, I'm all for that as well. Well, I mean, to be fair, like the stuff I get from this, uh, yeah, it's Vector nine one one. I had it correct. Um, John over there has helped me tremendously throughout. Basically, I don't know for a very long time. I have emails going back to since I got the laser, since I got the CNC. Um, he was I was directed to him, I believe, by Nick from MPG Creations, mm -hmm. or it might have been Nap, one of the two. And honestly, for the prices that he hosts, it's not too bad. And on his site, he has a whole bunch of different stuff on there as well, and uh, which he's already done. He sells for, you know, pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, I would check him out. And if you need something done, especially if it's military related, um, I don't think he does much that's not military at related um, once in a while, maybe, but. Yeah, great resource. Good uh, uh, go stop by vector911.com. He has his new website up there. Um, but yeah, I utilize him um, when I outsource for the military items. Anything else is usually Etsy or I do myself. Um, like the plaque I am doing currently. <coughs> Excuse me. Just got over a cold. Um, I am doing that all myself. I am taking. Uh, outlines of stuff, making them, and then I'm uh, combining different files and creating its own file. So I've done it long enough where I could do that kind of stuff. There's once you start learning uh, Lightburn and everything like that, it kind of starts coming together in such a way where you can produce your own files. Like I said, the only time I really get in trouble is the very detailed patches or organizational stuff that I can't get a good mm -hmm. picture on. And then John will take over and he does, like I said, I don't know how he does it. It's pure magic. Like he's even told me his process and I have not been able to even come close to what he does. So. Um, cat butt. Oh, was that what that was? Okay. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, I have a whole stock file of vectors and SVGs. Um, and I will only put up stuff that I made myself. I'm not going to put up things that John has or, you know, someone that's given me. Because, A, that's, I don't believe in that. <clears throat> but um, a lot of the stuff ain't hard to do. I mean, like, a lot of things that people want on the walls, like, you can put together fairly fast. So. Well, I might also have shortly. Well, I have to print it out. But I'm going to test it on, on my truck. Um uh, Nice uh, RAM logo. Two tone, oh, okay. two -tone yeah. black and red um, 3D print on the sides. They wanted, apparently, they wanted uh, $25 per logo, per, yeah. Oh, wow. And it, and it was a sticker to go on it. So, so I just said, well, I'll buy a 3D printer, which is how much, and then I'll just design the thing and do it myself, so. But well, that's the great thing of having stuff yeah. like that. You can make anything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is, you know, um, imagination. It's also what I'm, I'm noticing too lately is 
I like to try to design things that, um, I guess it just reminds me of Shark Tank, you know, you're, you're, you're filling a need, right? You don't have, there might be, Yeah. let me figure out, okay, I can just, you know, 3D print that, that I don't know if everybody has seen it, but like Lee Oman, you know, I'm, he just, that pool mm-hmm. filter, um, adapter ring, whatever you want to call it. Boom. It's in, it works, good to go. You know, so yeah, that's my, that's my enjoyment. I, I, I like doing it. Frustration also too, because let's be honest with myself too, that, uh, you know, these definitely don't always go the first time. No, you're right. So, but then it, that's I mean, a lot of the things that we do. Yeah. You, know. you said what you're on your 11th yes. version. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, print all so, I mean, of those, like, mind you, but I say 11 because every time I saved it, it would save to whatever, whatever, whatever change I made on it, it would save it, or I would, I would save it just so that I, I didn't lose it. Um, I probably printed it maybe about four or five times, um, and then try how to tweak little things. Um, but again, this is something that I'm going to try to to put on Etsy to sell. So even if I sell the digital file at five dollars a pop, I don't want somebody printing it out and having a bad experience. Because that is something that, as we all know, you know, can come back and haunt you. So uh and I I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh Ben Warren does have a couple of names for uh 3d files if you're looking for like stl files um or for like um 3d carving for like uh the scene well. by the way um michael mazalik would be one of them i'm sure he's going to mention and then he's more uh on that side than i am when it comes to that but um he's actually helped me produce 3d files in the past ben himself i'm not sure if he's looking to get into that line of work but I know he can do that. Um, and again, everyone kind of knows the story behind my 3D stuff on my uh, CNC. So once I figure that out and I get that situated and kind of dialed in, I'll probably produce more stuff like that. But did you see that? Did you see that thing that you did? Ben did last week the the plaque. Oh my yes. god! And if that's a step over rate, whatever he used on that file. To, to sit there and whatever amount of hours extra to not have to stand, mm-hmm. I'm for it. <laughs> I don't mind saying I don't. But. Look, in the beginning, I'm not going to lie, Ben. I love you, man. Um, but when you told me your step over rate, I was unsure. But I've been there. I've seen his work. I've seen it progress to where it is at today. And like, yeah, does it add hours? Absolutely. Is it worth it? Yes. Because you know what? When his machine makes something and the details there, he doesn't have to worry about sanding that detail off. He doesn't have to worry about messing it up with a sander or sandpaper or any of that process. The only worry he has at that point is essentially making sure the finish goes on just right. Yeah. And that that's a big deal. So I, I applaud him for the, his work with that and where he's at because – he definitely knows what he's doing. So oh, I have a I have a question. The and this is for everybody. Anybody who wants to jump in on the live chat or um, on that bench, I am looking to finish it. I have Rubio. Um, unfortunately, that's a very expensive finish. But when I when I got it, I tell you what, I fell in love with it because it. I I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of voties and. And Rubio and all that. I can tell you what I know, and when I put it on, it's night and day. It holds up very well. I I, I love it. But my question is, with a slab like that, such as that, like bench, I understand that when you put finishes on, you need to put it on both sides. Otherwise, it could cut. So that's a yes. big. That's a you know. My concern is, can I put it on one side? wait an hour, flip it over, do the other side. Yes. Well, when people say about a good cup, 
they mean they finish one side and they just leave it. They never That's go right. back to finish right. the other side. You know, this is this is too many man hours to put into to find out. Oh yeah, by the way. No. <laughs> you know. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't wait, you know, too long because you're where you're what you're essentially trying to do is you're trying to make sure that moisture is not escaping one side more than the other. Because let's face it. No matter how dry the wood is, there's some kind of moisture that would be going in and out of it, and that's where you get wood movement. So, and that goes along into grain direction, type of grain, and that's a whole other episode I think we've done before. But um, what you're doing is just trying to make sure you're not having, you know, like I said, moisture escape quicker on one side than the other. And that don't happen overnight unless it's really wet wood, which I'm, I'm no, assuming that those, yeah, no, this is not. those are pretty good. I um, mean, I can have to worry about that all that much. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've had projects where it was dry wood and everything was finished both sides, but I've had them go from New Jersey down to uh, the Carolinas and like, I think it was the fall. Yeah. So it went from like colder weather to a little bit warmer weather and high humidity in the south, higher than Jersey, <laughs> believe it or not. And it did move. Like they, they literally said, hey, my table leg is lifted up. And I'm like, well, you took something that was finished. And then the next day after I finished it, brought it from a, one climate to a totally different climate and temperature, humidity, and everything else. And I don't even know how they packed it. So that could have been a factor as well. But, um, you know, I've told the story before it all worked out. Uh, but the moral of the story is we can fight wood movement all we want. We can finish both sides. But when it comes down to it, the wood will move if it wants to move. Mm. But uh, lakes, does anybody have any suggestions on what to put on the lakes? Because this is going to be outside shaved, yeah. Well, oh. mm. oh. nah, I mean, just their own. But, <laughs> um, what kind of lake style are you going for? Well, I mean, like, you have the board behind you, you mentioned you want to so make my, out of it, but is there like a style? So, that, that's what I'm not sure of, but I was thinking about splitting this. Doing putting putting a um, uh, piece of ash in between each, you know, cutting this in half and then cutting it in half again, putting a piece of ash in between, you know, give it a, give it a little contrast. Um, I'm, because of the of the piece of wood, the width and being that it's going to be a bench, I was thinking about doing box legs and then possibly doing a stretcher in between to to make it stable. Um, something simple. Instead of okay. doing either doing either doing box joints, either doing uh, forty five. I'm not really sure what I want to do on that yet, but that's what I'm figuring on on doing. But my concern is, I really don't want to start with trying to put epoxy and total boat and everything on there, being you know being that it's going to be outside. So that to me is, a, okay. is another layer. I mean, I can. If it's if it's gonna you know make the piece last, and I don't have to worry about it, but I just really don't want to go down the epoxy road just for just for something to keep it off the ground. So I'm thinking about you know you know buying something in the store, you know, like a, but I really don't know what to get. That's the problem. You know, I'm not. I'm sure. So I mean, Halcyon is always an option. I, I suggest Halcyon for any outdoor uh, pieces based on the fact that, like, I literally have a piece. Have you ever been to, I'll say, New York, or you ever been around the Great Lakes during winter? You understand what I'm trying to get at here. They get snow. They get rain. I mean, like, that's the majority of the seasons. The You know, during the summer, it gets humid and hot. I mean, like, and where it's located, this particular sign, it's up on a hill, one of the biggest in the area, and, like, it's facing the sun, like, when I made this for my parents, I didn't assume that's where they would put it, but I made it so they could put it outside. And like every year I get a picture from, you know, their, I call it the, the farm. It's not really a farm, but it's an additional camp. But long story short, I get a picture and I, I kid you not, 
the first thing I thought was going to happen was the paint was going to fade. Right. It hasn't faded mm. at all. Like that alone tells me, you know, the worth of Halcyon. And like, you know, Total Bolt has sponsored the podcast, and but they sponsored it for a good reason. We were 100% behind their products. Um, they're good quality products. Can they be pricey? Absolutely. But I have also found that unfortunately, when it comes to quality stuff, 95% of the time, you have to buy something that's a little pricey to get that benefit. The other 5%. You might be able to get away with yeah. some else, but I just didn't um, want to do epoxy. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the thing I don't, you know, yeah. That's the only thing I don't want to do. You can get. You definitely don't have to do epoxy on that. Um, but for the legs, there are a thousand different leg styles, man. And like, <laughs> I just recognize that bad boy. I, I think I did that with my original laser too. I have a video of that still. I think you did. Yes, you're right on that. Yeah, you didn't. You yeah. didn't get your 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 big boy then. How was that laser doing? Nope. She's uh she's out there. She's a little dusty, but I go out there and I wipe it mm-hmm. off and you know talk a little sweet to her. Um, someone at at work was like, "Hey, you need to get a motorcycle." I'm like, you know what? No, I have an eight thousand dollar laser. I can sit on yeah. top and be tender. <laughs> vroom vroom. <laughs> yeah. But. No, uh, you know, I, I've been very lucky. I was able to get some big equipment in my shop and, uh, I, I, I'm at that point where I'm actually just enjoying what I have. I'm not looking to go and get something sure. new. I honestly, in my mind, I don't need anything new. There's always those nicety stuff, right? Like if a festival domino fell into my lap at some point in time, I wouldn't complain, <laughs> but it's one of those things where like, before it always seemed like there, I had to get something new. I had to get something new. And now it's just one of those things I'll walk through the tool. I'm like, Oh, you know, maybe someday, but yeah, man, that bench is going to turn out beautifully. I'm really enjoying watching uh, the process and you go through it. Um, I'm interested on the legs. I am very interested in how you're going to complete those. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I do have design ideas. If you, uh, I will uh my two cents, we get together. Wants to put out there. I just my my problems that I've had to deal with with everything is ideas and skill level. Sometimes don't always match up, but I yeah, have to, you know, yeah, you no, try. No, I agree. I yeah. just hate wasting a like a good piece of wood and find out that oh yeah, by the way. I, you know, I didn't set up this all right, and that's why that cut didn't happen, right? You know, whatever. You know this, but some of the listeners that might be listening might not. Um, so I think you might remember the story. But in the beginning, when I was working with some jewelry, trying to figure it out with my Porter Cable uh, joint maker, Dovedale mm-hmm. joint maker, I was using a lot of cheap wood. And even before that, when I was trying to do – some joinery on a different project. I was using some cheap pine and it was splintering and it was, it was causing me more grief than I really wanted to deal with. <laughs> so I went out and I got select pine because, you know, at the time I really, I, I spent some money there and even that difference in quality changed how things were, you know, were working. I was, there wasn't splitting as easy. I was able to do some joinery. Was it great? No, but I will say the best way to learn is with the material you're going to use. It's pricey. Like, no, I'm serious. Like, honestly, it's pricey. And yes, sometimes it hurts, but you're never going to learn how that material reacts to what you're trying to do with it until you actually attempt it. And you might be doing fairly well with that material, but you won't know that because you're using cheap material that's splintering and doing everything else and not reacting like a more expensive piece of wood. Because the wood density, green, and all that matters in the end. Um, like I said, I've learned a hard lesson. 95% of that time, you have to use quality materials to get the results you want and learn while you go. The other 5% you might be able to get away with, or you might be able to, you know, get to a certain point and then jump over. 
but it is definitely worth not buying 10 different mm-hmm. table saws if you already know you're going to buy the table saw on the 10th time. Because I want to see you're really good at trading. I mean, I'll, I'll give Nick where, you know, props are due. Nick, when he was on the podcast and doing woodworking, he was great at Facebook Marketplace. He would find deals that were just like almost mm-hmm. impossible. He would get five different tools to get to the last one. I swear you give that guy a paper clip and he would end up with a table saw at the end of the day. Right. You got to yeah. give him credit, exactly. right? <clears throat> but not everyone can do that. Not everyone has that capability or even those resources within their area. So, like, I, I, I just, I get it. I get going into this and being like, I only need this table saw that's 300, 400 bucks. I'm not going to do more than that. But if you already know where you want to be, save your money. Because honestly, I went through one, two, three, maybe four different table saws before I got the one I got. And like, if I would have just saved that money, I could have got the one I had. And then I could save money in the long run. Buy once, cry once sometimes works. Not all Mm -hmm. the time. But definitely if you know where your vector is going. Now... I mean, I don't know about you. I didn't know where I was going to head. I didn't know where I was going to be at the end of it. So it made sense at the time. It's easy to have 2020 vision when you're looking back, you know what I'm saying? But like there are people out there that get into this hobby and they already know where they're going to end up. So it's just a way to look at it. I I, I agree with you. Um, You do have to, because I have bought cheaper and then, had to pay and i think i think anybody that does this has done it to some degree um and i have gone the other route and spend the money and um so it does it does make a difference you know i wanted a uh, new sander and i decided oh i'm gonna get yeah. the jet 1020 because that's what i can fit you know and i i was gonna i was gonna buy one cheaper and i, I got to the point where i it's like you know what fixing tools is great if you're just starting out but why am i fixing tools to to get started either i have it or don't no that might be a good resource if you got a good deal or what have you and i'll use my drum sander as a example i got my drum sander for three hundred dollars that's where you'll be um 16 by 32 and it's a great drum sender i i would never in a million years be able to find that deal again it's worked really really well until i had a bolt break and i had a uh, a piece break i could not find i was lucky enough to find that piece on the interwebs randomly and I was able to piece it back together, but because it's an older piece and because they no longer make it, I had to do a lot of research. I was dead in the water, not being able to use that for at least a month or two. That's a long time. Especially with the plot. It is. Yeah, yeah. So it is very likely when you go on Facebook Marketplace and you buy older tools, they might work great. You might not have any issues. But that is something that I never foresee to happen is a bracket breaking and then me not being on board. Luckily, I was working with another woodworker when I was in Jersey here and there, and he had the capability to create a new one or do someone that could create a new one. So I found one online before that was able to happen, but I still would have been done in the water or had to get rid of the tool completely or buy another one I see online to part it out. So there's obviously advantages and disadvantages to buying used tools, but um, taking it from someone that's done it, if you need it, go ahead and buy the used tool. But if you can save for it and you don't need it right away, buy a newer tool that's going to do you for a lot longer and Go that direction. Well, that was really it's not. <laughs> I don't. Know. Yeah, it's just not an imperative to have all the tools. Like, um, I had a used bandsaw. I bought when I was deployed, so I was on Facebook Marketplace, and I found a bandsaw. This older gentleman was getting rid of. I called back to the states, 
And I was like, hey, I had a friend. I'm like, hey, man, I know you have a truck. <laughs> I really want to buy this uh, particular bandsaw. Can you do me a favor? So I get him the money. He goes down, talks to the guy, great guy, told me all about it, gets in the truck, delivers it. I spent probably another four or $500 trying to get it where it needed to be. That's crazy. It right. worked. It would work perfectly, but it wasn't the right tool for what the job was trying to use it. And that's when I went and eventually invested into a brand new bandsaw. And I have had issues with it, but I was able to fix it. I was able to learn the tool better because of those issues. And it were user error. It absolutely was. But that bandsaw is one of my favorite tools now. Nice. Nice. Speaking. So, I mean, um, good. Buy once, cry once. You know, I, I know that a lot of us mill up wood. And know that we do mm -hmm. that to keep the cost down because, the, I mean, the price is due. But in some instances, do you find that it's just easier to buy um either S2S or, or, you know, some, some milled up lumber instead of actually trying to mill it up yourself. So I got away from buying complete slabs unless I got a good okay. deal. Um, and when, when I get a good deal, that's a little different. I'll, I'll invest the time and kind of mill those up. But S2S is usually my go-to. Um, and I also buy more in bulk than I have in the past. So when I go and I'm needing, I don't know, a certain board for the cherry or walnut. I'll almost double that. That way I can have it in the shop. With the shop going in the direction it's going, I am going to go and buy basically the three different hardwoods and different qualities I use them to have them on hand. Because I use a lot of walnut. I use a lot of cherry. I use a little bit of maple. And then poplar is another one I do use in the shop because there are some projects that they go on the wall. That's all they're ever going to do. They want a lighter color wood, but they don't want the expense of uh, maple. Sometimes I do use poplar depending on the project. Um, not as much as I did in the past, but it's still there. And I'm just, I, I, I I'm going to know the different shapes and sizes I need. So I can go ahead and do a stack of like, I don't know, of those sizes and shapes I need for the projects I'm about to do. And that could be a day in the shop, just cutting, you know, you know, just getting everything ready and prepped. And it's not like I'll be doing what I have in the past. And I've done this where there's a certain plaque someone likes. They'll order one. I'll make it. I'll have two other jobs. They'll come back and say, hey, can I get two more of those same plaques with different names? And you're like, okay, sure. And it just goes into this entire cycle of you just every other job doing another plaque that you've done 10 of already. So I'm just trying to get ahead of all that. That's what I'm trying to get at there. Good. So, yeah. uh, Ben, I definitely will be reaching out to you, though, when I get that. If you're out there tonight, he's he's a great yeah he, uh, he has left the chat. Uh, he I know he's been having some problems with the internet and the storms down in Texas, but uh, he's a great resource. Um, I know you're a great resource when it comes to uh, 3D printing. I have enjoyed watching you dive into that. Um, I've enjoyed watching your shop grow in the way it has over the last year. I, can't, I need more and. <laughs> You, I, so I say grow in the fact that the organization is on point. I know you might not see it because you're in there every day, but every little bit I see, it's definitely, it's been a huge increase in potential from what I saw in the beginning of the year. Um, I mean, just for the stuff you showed me today, like that's a lot of work, man. And you're definitely, it's, it's Last being year shown. The so, bench. And, and even this year, a rough, so. <laughs> I'm trying to put that, you know, this is actually a little therapeutic for me. I mean, we all have stuff going on in our lives, and I'm not going to go down that road, but um, between medical and, and, and family loss and everything, it was it was a rough year. Um, but this yeah. is this is new, and I, this is how I, this is how I, I guess, if anybody wants to say cope with it. So this works for me, you know, and I, I 
I tell everybody, please go find your own thing. Go find whatever it is. It doesn't have to be woodworking. Just do something. Cooking. You know. I will say, though, woodworking comes with a community that supports and actually helps each other. True. I will say that. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I rarely ever see. I mean, you will see the anomaly where somebody will get upset with somebody else. And it's usually business related. But when it comes to actually, yeah. you know making something and you know honestly I, I i feel like sometimes and i don't maybe i'm going to speak out of turn here for a second but i feel like sometimes people are too nice and i don't mean that being, it could but be i mean that but if you don't like something tell me i would rather you tell me you know than sit and, and say oh yeah. oh yeah that looks great and then like oh you know did you see what the hell he did you know i mean because I know, listen, not everybody's going to say it, but I know somebody probably would be out there going, my God, that looks like heck. So, Well, I, I do believe uh, once you've entered the community and you've made those connections that you will find people that are honest. Well, you you find said people that you don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> yeah, probably. I, I, I'll i tell you straight up. You ask me how it is, don't be offended if no, I say I, it. No, like that's it. what I want. Um I mean, we all need the honest feedback, and I I feel the same way. If you don't like one of my pieces or you see something I did wrong, I'm here to grow and get better. I am not here for, you know, that looks great service. Um, So, yeah, I I feel you, man. Uh, I do think that we have to be more honest with each other. Ask Snap. He's he's honestly showing me things, and I'm like, I don't like it. And it could be because of the wood he used or, like, the design. And like, sometimes we don't control that either. Sometimes it's the client and that that's exactly what they want. And they're exactly, they they, ha- they are happy of how that turned out. You don't always get to like your own projects, unfortunately. I'm not painting any walnuts, so we're good there. But I have, I painted walnut before. I'm not even going to ask. No, I can't. I'm sorry. I want, but I can't. You know. Not like in a project, but like testing stuff out because, I mean, there's there are things that, you know, painting different woods and then using the CNC or the laser add different design aspects. So, hmm. but hey, with that, we're going to wrap this episode up. We're about an hour and seven minutes in. Um, Victor, man. Thank you for coming on. You've been a loyal supporter of the show. You've been with us, as far as I remember, from the beginning. Correct me if I'm wrong, but from the beginning, um, you've been a Patreon, a good friend, part of the family. Um, it was It's nice to have you on here, talking shop, seeing you grow in your shop. Um, it's been It's been great. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for being my guest host tonight. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the masses? Uh, the floor honestly, is yours. just get out there um, like it's been before. Um, be creative. Uh, whatever it is that you want to do, you know, learn learn what it is that you're passionate about and try it. And, I mean, the biggest thing that I can honestly say is stop being afraid and do it. Because I can tell you from personal experience, everything that I've talked about tonight, things that I'm doing. I mean, I'm talking about building a CNC. I'm definitely afraid of all the stuff that I have to do between the controller, between the wiring, between building. But you know what? I have a semblance of a table and we're going to move forward with it. So I can honestly say that at the end of the day, just go out and do it. Figure it out. Sometimes when you do that, it's not exactly as hard as you think. It's actually, you know, what you built it up in your head. So with that, I, I, you know, I send everybody off out in the world and just go out and and do it. I'll figure it out. I like it. Best of that's some pretty good solid advice. If you're a woodworker and you're going out and you're doing stuff, like you said, Victor you're going to run into some roadblocks. There's always going to be those things that you're scared to do. And like you said, just doing it sometimes helps you get through it. And then next time it becomes easier until it becomes not even a thought in your mind. 
Oh yeah, um, and just ask people, quick just story. Ask people, just people will help. Yeah, like I mean, <laughs> a quick story, real quick on that. When I first started, I hated the router. Like I was definitely scared of the router. I never used one before I started woodworking. I never like the whole thing a bit spinning at that fast and sometimes pretty close to your hand oh, at different router. times. Okay. Okay. Scared. Yeah, palm router, like um can get you, you know, a little jumpy, right? Having near misses, I've had those instances, but like it's one of my favorite tools now. So I like I think I can't say just do it for the episode title because I'm pretty sure that it approaches upon someone else's nah, scenario. Right. But we're gonna good. we're definitely gonna hit good. very close. Just send them to my it. way. We're good. Yes, send send way. Way. <laughs> but uh, thank you again for coming on. You can find Victor at Wim Designs on Instagram. Um, check him out. Message him. Ask him about his 3D uh, works. What he's working on with the bench. Um, I can't wait to see the progress and all that. So, um, do you have Etsy? Um, actually, that's what I'm. I'm going to be starting hopefully this week. Um, this is what I'm. Stay design. tuned for Etsy. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, these designs should be up there, and anybody with a 3D printer, um, I'm going to try to keep it okay. reasonable as far as pricing and and just grab the file and go. And I can tell you from personal experience, they've all been tested. You know, so it shouldn't be an issue. And anybody with a domino, like I said, I have a line of accessories um i will be i'll probably do a bundle um i could do an individual and please anybody that has any, any questions or suggestions don't hesitate to to throw it out there because if there's something that you want and i can provide it for you i'll be more than willing to try to figure that out and get that working for you that's it man i can't you know, like it's gonna be fun watching you in this upcoming year and what's going on with that Thank you, everyone, for listening to the episode and being with us here tonight. Um, my cat is making great music in the background for the outro. Um, anywho, with that, thank you for listening. Get in the shop. Go make some sodas. Sodas Station Podcast. Oot. It's a